Welcome to a fine gaming experience, everyone. We got another new beastie to take down today in the Elder Reaches here. How are you feeling about that? I'm feeling great. I'm also excited because today is my favorite time. It is New Weapon Day. And what a new weapon it is. We'll have a lot to talk about here. Yes, we will. But first, you have to make sure you feed all of your terrifying little anglerfish? Um, I don't know if anglerfish really stick their antennae out of the water. Maybe it's trying to lure us in. That's more horrifying. <laughs> At least I'm feeding them. Could you picture if I didn't? Waking up beside, like, in the morning with one of those just looking at you? No, I need to talk to you about your choice of, of animals here. Uh, those, those are nitro toads, and there were some, like, raven crow type things. You've got a. Revolters. They're, they're, uh. Revolters. <laughs> they're carrion birds, you know, so if I die in my sleep from one of the toads blowing up, they got a snack ready. Or being consumed entirely by one of your giant anglerfish. So we are jumping into the light bow gun which is an entire new system and information to be delved out because now we have to worry about ammunition. And way back in one of the earlier LPs, we had talked about ammunition and the, the early costs of it. One of the biggest problems with using the bow guns early on is you don't have a lot of options as far as ammunition, and you also have to pay for most of it. You can farm up most of the ammunition types. I believe the normal, you, you just kind of have an infinite supply of it most times. The other ammunition types, if you want special stuff, you actually can go farm it. But in most cases, most people just buy it. I, I personally buy it. There's so many festivals and whatnot out there where they sell half-price ammo anyways. It's worth stocking up at least a bit. Absolutely. Yeah, when a festival happens, fill up your ammo reserves because at that point you're getting massive discounts. We're going for a very base weapon high damage fairly powerful and each of the light bow guns has an ammo listing as you can see here and each of the ammo listings are going to tell you what types of ammo can use and what levels it can use now there are only levels in a few different shot styles most ammo types only go up to a second level except for your your specials or your sorry your regulars which are your normal piercing and spread shots those will actually go up to three and we'll talk a little bit more about the ammo types later, but there's also another feature that you need to learn with any of the light bow guns. And that's customization. Which is so deep now. It used to only have a handful of abilities you could slap on, but it got quite expanded here. There's a lot of different things you can put on if you want to change up how your weapon's built. There's so many different neat mods here. Recoil is pretty much the good default one to put on but you can really increase your damage output your shields if you're going for heavy where your damage boost area is lots of little neat things and you will notice this list here is not exhaustive of just the light bow gun this is the entire list for every bow gun so the wyvern heart snipe special scope and shield are not part of this bow gun right now Adversely, when we switch over to the heavy bowgun, you'll see that quite a lot of the, I believe, the evading reload, the wyvern blast, and a couple others will not be available to that bowgun type. So it, it seems overwhelming at first, but like Brick said, you're going to want to do recoil for the most part. And it does actually show you your different ammo types and how high the recoil is for certain things. So when you float over the recoil suppressor, it'll go, using this type, it's low recoil. And recoil will knock you off targets, but if you get high recoil, you will get blown backwards. Not just the reticle moves. With a new gun as well here, I kind of want to change up my gear, so let's slap on some new armor. It's not exactly ideal for a ranged weapon, but it's a better mix here, I find. I would also like to point out there's some stuff here we don't really need. We don't really need the ice protection or some of the other skills here. So I'm going to take the beta versions of these armors. With the alpha version here, there is a useful thing in Evade Extender, and that's one thing the Light Bowgun is really good at. I would actually say its mobility is up there 
probably around where dual blades are. Now, another thing that's important and you have to understand when picking up a bow gun is you're using a ranged weapon, which means regular close range monster attacks are now going to do more damage. Any of those base attacks, a lot of their elemental attacks are going to do more damage to your melee users, but yeah, your ranged users, you're gonna get chewed up if you get too close to something. So evasion is key. That's the interesting thing with ranged weapons is you get a elemental defense boost instead of the defense boost from a melee weapon. I was about to say, you need some layered armor here. You look a little sloppy. And this is the best layered that, armor. That wasn't that what that wasn't what I was hoping for. That's terrifying. I, I love absolutely love any of the heads that you can put over top of your character. This is not my favorite, but it is definitely my second favorite. We gotta pay homage to Loki here. You know, the pure Palico team. <laughs> uh yeah, we are we're still at that point in the game where we're mixing and matching armor sets. At this point, there's just not a lot of reason to pile on a specific set, because set bonuses are very rare and very specific. Now, as we get later in the game, you'll start noticing that many armor sets have set bonuses and we get far later in the game there are even small components you can get maybe two pieces will give you a set bonus and then four pieces will give you a second set bonus but right now just equip what's best yes you're gonna look hideous but that's what layered armor is for and there's so many layered armors in the game once you really start rolling in it the autumn festival meal here isn't a great one doesn't give you a lot of really good stat boosts so Brooks is going in and showing us once again how to compose your own meals. You can notice all the different fish options, all the different meat options, the vegetables. That's because a lot of those, unfortunately off camera, but a lot of those optional missions have been done to get extra components. Just because you don't see us doing them does not mean you shouldn't. You absolutely should fill up your component bank because meals are a free buff. Well, not free, but a cheap buff that lasts you quite a long time. In most cases, the entire length of a hunt. And to be honest, too, like, you really want those buffs, and some of them are really good for some of the weapons. Increasing your attack power with a bow gun can be really noticeable. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I'm chugging my attack and defense potions right off the bat. And the different types of ammos for the bow guns, each bow gun kind of has a specialty ammo. Uh, some of them can use a couple types fairly well, but most of them will have either the normal spread or piercing shots that they're really good with and this bow gun is meant for mostly spread shots but it also does pretty well with normal i'd actually say this one is a little bit more normal shot focused because we have normal shot one and two as our specialty ammo okay but we, as you can see here i'm firing off my sticky ammo which is just a little explosive device covering well, resin or glue or whatever, it'll stick it to a giant lava creature's skin. You have to wait for the damage on this one, but it does do KO damage, which is pretty handy. What Brix was talking about there, the special ammo types, you'll see on some of the ammos, you see that little arrow, the double arrow pointing up. And the reason that's pointing up is it's telling you that when you fire the shot, it is going to fire multiple shots at once. These types of shots can only be done with light bow guns and they can only be done with specific types of ammo on the different bow guns. So early on in the game, you're not gonna have a lot of options, but later on, you're gonna have different guns that are specialized in elemental ammo, some that are good with normal, and you're gonna have some that are just meant for a heavy, heavy damage standing in front of a monster's face. So pick the way you wanna play and stick to it. I would say probably the least effective of the ammo types overall is piercing. It's good, but it's only good against sizable monsters and only in specific situations so try to get yourself a good normal or spread weapon early on there's basically three categories that the light bow guns like to niche into you have your close range ones like i'm using now that tend to be your spread shot your normal ammo you got your long range ones like the purest shots and then you got your support and elemental ones, which are more using the specific weaknesses of the monster or buffing teammates. Yeah. Now you did notice there, there is a special shot that was being used and the special shot for this gun is the Wyvern, 
I want to say Wyvern Spike, but that's not the name Wyvern of it. Wyvern Blast. Wyvern Blast. And what it does is it kind of creates a detonating mine in the ground. And if a monster strikes it, they're going to take an astronomical amount of damage and it, the mine will go away quicker. If you have the mine in front of you and you're shooting with your weaker shots, it'll detonate in smaller explosions. Overall, try to get as much damage as you can. So try to lure the monsters into these rather than shooting them yourself because the damage is significant and you don't have to sit there for like 30 shots to get the full use of them. They also last less depending on how much damage the bomb itself takes. If you're only doing about 30 damage a shot, I believe it lasts uh, three times. And if you get over 100 damage, it will do massive amounts of damage to the opponent. But usually it has to be an opponent's attack triggering something like that. Yeah, the light bow gun doesn't have a lot of very high damage ammo that it could use. So you're not going to see a lot of, of big hits coming off that. You're going to let the monsters do the work for you. But you can see that extra pop coming off from this here. Those little explosions. And you do need them. It is an important thing to do when using the light bow gun. It is probably your highest source of damage when used correctly. You really want to make sure you're including them in your arsenal and using them effectively. They do come back pretty quick. Luckily, you get, I believe, three charges and you get them back pretty often. You can actually see one about to return right now, that, that large clip sitting right above our ammo selection. One is about to be restored and we already have one on cooldown, so we're, we're good. There we go, we just got our second one back. Man, Lava Seoth is not a fun creature to fight with a ranged weapon, though. Honestly, Lava Seoth, I just, I don't like Lava Seoth as a monster. There's too much waiting. I like to, I like something that's really aggressive that I can just get involved with, even if I die. Lava Seoth is definitely one of the more annoying creatures for disappearing for short phases there. That was an excellent Nitro Toad. Thank you. Not to mention all the elemental shenanigans it gets with its armor. Lava Seoth has lava armor, and we can cool it down with water shots, and it will be quite vulnerable to water while it's glowing bright red. There's a special technique that Brix is using there I want to talk about afterwards. Just pay attention to what he was doing with the, the shot on the ground. Please continue. But uh, yeah, Lava Seoth's elemental weaknesses will change once that armor hardens. He's also got very small weak points, and he has huge defense. So, yeah, trying to just use heavy damage against him is not going to be the most effective. But, good way to show off the bowgun, at least. Mm hmm Now, you are using your melee attack to detonate those shots, and your melee attack actually does more damage than your shots in a lot of cases. So the melee attack with the bow gun, it doesn't do a lot, and it kind of puts you in a bad situation in the fact that you're not dealing consistent damage. But if you need to detonate your shots, especially on a monster you just woke up from sleeping, it's an excellent way to do that because I think it does about 35, 40 damage at this level, and that's more damage than you'll get out of just doing most of your shots. I think the only ones that do big damage like that are stickies in the right spots. I will do more damage with my special shot two, sorry, my normal shot two, if all three connect on a weak point. Mm. But that's the thing too, the melee attack is, like you said, fantastic for triggering those Wyvern Blast. A bad situation here. Unfortunately, Lava Seoth does tours of all the other areas creatures like hanging out. I actually would rather fight him in that situation than his normal lava pool. I do not like the jumping. Good dodge. He's just playing an artillery unit here all the way across the room, though. Banking a shot off the ground. I don't know how he can do that, but don't question it. I, I think it was just a, an optical illusion more than anything. There is no spoon. <laughs> is he leaving? The disrespect on this monster. The funny thing is, though, he uh, walked over to this area and uh, met Dodo just to fuck around with us more. 
He's 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 very lonely. He's very lonely. I mean, would you have a lot of friends if you were entirely coated in magma all the time? Um, you can't hug people with magma arms. You can, but you can only do it once. Ah, that's fair. Now, unlike Jury Toad, that uh, Lava Sioth is the higher form of, his armor can't be knocked off. Jury Toad is just mud armor, and it's pretty easy to just bang that off. Jury Toad has a lot less moves even than Lava Sioth, I find. These little lava wiggles he can do under the ground are much more annoying, and once we get to his nest area with the pools. He's got a special dolphin leap he does out of those. Mm-hmm. It's a very nasty, nasty part of the fight, and, and more of why I don't like him. It's a lot of that sit and wait. And I, like I said, I would rather just face my fears and go up against a monster. Keep an eye on the reticle, too. You know, you have to sit in the right range for each ammo type. Your spread shot needs to be fired up close. Your normal needs to be fired at a medium range. And, of course, piercing is more of a long-range shot. But it's not as important as some other weapons as long as you can keep fairly consistent shots and because it is such a mobile weapon you're going to be moving in and out so if you miss a couple shots to dodge an attack that's fine remember you don't want to get hit with a ranged weapon you will feel it speaking of dodges that's something we haven't mentioned too much is after a shot even a melee attack we're putting down a wyvern blast you get to get the ability to do a double dodge, which will give you a little slide dash. That slide dash is very good because you can continue firing between those shots. Also, another cool thing about this weapon is if you're sliding down hills, you can actually reload on the slide. I believe you can also reload in the air, too, which is a fairly useful thing to do. It's very useful. It's actually a lot quicker than your standard reload. And when we were talking about mods earlier on, too, there are certain ones you can put on that will very much change how your gun works. If you can get your reload and recoil to a certain point, you can run and gun or reload while moving around. It makes it very, very effective. If nothing else, this is such a mobile weapon, you don't want to be... Shut up about the clutch clock. <laughs> That's a nice board feature. We will cover that later, but yes... They will tell you about that anytime you should be using it. One thing that I think is important to understand about this weapon and just all weapon types that are ranged is that the most important part of playing a ranged weapon is getting that consistency of damage. Because your damage is lower, you're at a range, they don't want you to, to be able to do as much damage as like a, a great sword. So consistency will allow you to get on the top of the charts. And there's some things about the light bow gun that I really enjoy. I love the mobility, and I absolutely love the weapon or the ammo selection. But the heavy bow gun is more of your heavy artillery. It is the big, slow, stand in one place and cause problems for things. This gun is meant to be used on the move. Do not stand in one place and find those weak points. Being able to hit your weak points accurately is a big point of this gun. And even when you see your reticle is showing like, hey, you're in the prime damage area. That is a generic message. You can be close to your prime area, but you might have to be a little bit closer, a little bit further away sometimes to get the highest amount of damage. Mm -hmm. There's like a sweet spot that is very, very fine. And the more you move around, the harder it's going to be to do that. But monsters don't stay in one place. You you pretty much have no choice but to continue moving. So the Dragon Ammo there had a big kickback on it and a long reload. But it does a tremendous amount of explosive damage. Another thing here with the wheel bar, seeing as it's up, uh, because of the ammo having limited quantities, if you don't want to go back to camp, find the ammo type you use the most. So yeah, your spread shots, or maybe you're fighting good old Kieran and you want to use some fire shots. Make sure you have whatever ingredient turns into that ammo, because very often you can get 20 pieces of ammunition for one of that ingredient and easily can fill up your stock mid-mission as long as you carry that with you. It's something, especially with the heavy bow gun, you'll notice me doing, but some of your better ammos, you only get, like you said, three shots or 20, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. 
and you'll be using those a lot, so you want to have more of them. And, for example, to get my normal shot 2, all I need is normal shot 1 and some gunpowder. And you can carry a lot of gunpowder. So it's very effective to just quickly make a huge pile on the fly and go back into combat with your good damage shots instead of just trying to manage with your subpar stuff. Man, those guys are slapping you around. Gastodons are not fun. Although, if you did notice earlier on, one of them did hit Lava Sioth himself there. They mm. can be somewhat handy, but I find them more of a pain in the ass. Yeah, they're not like the Gajalka. <laughs> Ugh, just fight me. <laughs> and he doesn't say flopped over for a while. Like, he very quickly writes himself where poor Dreytotus will stay on his body for a while, just rolling around. And a lot of those dives he does underneath will refresh his armor, which is very annoying. That's 60 damage for one of those Wyvern Blasts. Just remarkably good damage. Oof, that was nearly a bad situation. One thing we should point out with Lava Sioth, too, is you've seen him do his fireball attack. But he will have one where he'll rear back, charge it up, and then release it. It kind of looks like he's starting up for a roar. But that move is devastating. If you think he's doing a roar, dodge. Just play it safe. Mm-hmm. One more thing about the light bow gun. There's a lot to cover here. But as you're watching Brick's fight, notice the times when reloads happen versus the times when ammo is switched. Yes, normal two ammo is going to do a lot more than normal one. However, there's going to be situations where using your normal two ammo and running out, if you want a consistent amount of damage and the monster's got a nice exposed weak point or you're in the perfect spot, switch to a different ammo type and unload that. There's actually a way to fully reload your gun of all ammo types. I can't remember the button command, but you can hold down a button command and it'll go through every ammo type and reload every single one. So after a fight, kind of treat it like your version of sharpening and make sure your ammos are all loaded back up. That one's actually really easy. You just hold down triangle, your reload button, and it will reload everything down the line. And that's an interesting thing, too. We don't have to sharpen at all with any ranged weapons, so... There's that roar-looking shot you're talking about. And it is devastating. Like, you do not want to be hit by those. I really find it annoying, too, the little lava trails he'll leave everywhere. He's just consistent with his damage a lot of ways, just from moving Oof. around him. Look at the damage of that spread three. Now, there's a lot of kickback on that, but you're getting 11 about five or six times. So you're looking at doing, like, 60 damage per shot, and that stuff adds up. I really like spread ammo. I, I'm a big fan of spread ammo on my light bow gun, and I'm a big fan of the normal ammo on my heavy bow gun. In fact, the special shots on heavy bow gun are what it's all about. There's some particular ammos I love on the heavy, but we'll get to that in Heavy, like I said, was artillery, and the one thing that this thing does very well, Light Bowgun's great at elemental damage. So in this Lava Sioth fight, he's got so many different defenses, it's really hard to find the right white, white weak point. But on certain monsters, like I'd mentioned before, Kieran, having fire ammo, you can just do insane damage to those creatures. Oh, jumping in his pools. And this is one of those annoying phases where he'll move around a lot, and you can shoot him in the pool if you see him, but... It's a small window, he keeps moving around, and he's littering the whole area with... I don't want to say shrapnel, but... Basically fireballs. Yep. Probably flaming rocks he's digging up from underneath. It's, uh, how he's pooping? He's throwing magma poop at you. Would you really be surprised? What happened there? You found him, I guess, after Urg on a tangle with him, huh? Well, he, he just uh, had to leave, have a little cry moment, and then walk back to his nest. It happens. It does. Yeah, especially if the monster's in rage, sometimes they'll, they won't bother showing out that they're actually injured until after the rage is gone. 
Did you find it? Then let's head back. Did you find it? Yes, we finally finished finding all those Nergagante tracks we didn't last time. Keep in mind, at this point in the game, you're going to have lots of tracks to find, so keep an eye out in all the areas you're going through. Never, just as a rule, never ignore tracks. Always pick them up. You will notice when you're at maximum level for the creature, and every time you pick up one, it'll just say, like, hey, you got a new level on it, even though you didn't. <laughs> you want to make you feel like you're gaining something out of it. Now, finding those Nergagante tracks is going to open up a lot. Yeah, speaking of gaining things, this one gained a lot of things for us. I think Including me that. having a crappy connection. What? Yeah, well, that that just happens. We, uh, we do play together, and unfortunately, sometimes we'll be in the middle of a fight. I'll start noticing bricks running around doing something odd, and I'm like, oh no. And then our, our call will drop, because we, we do it over chat, and then next thing you know, we're soloing the monsters, or we're messing each other going, ah, we weren't that far, let's just go back and try again. Oh, perfect pets. Pumpkin Poogie perfect pets. Can you imagine walking around with a giant pumpkin on your butt? Not for very long. Throw it, throw it in the river. I, I'll take him up to the Meowster Chef. Oh, no! <laughs> I just want him to swim. I don't want him to be dinner. But we do eat a lot of pig. I'm assuming we probably have eaten a poogie or two at this point. We eat the moss wine. Ah, this monster. Basil juice. I've seen him already while I've been doing the LP, but uh, haven't shown him off to you guys. He is notorious for just interfering with fights, and he'll be a fun one to do fun. Well, you know what? He's actually a lot easier to deal with, and one of the things about fighting him with a melee weapon, it's not only a pain, but we can't really show him off as well, because there's a lot of cool stuff that he does in the air, a lot of stuff he does on the ground, and if we can do it and see it at a distance, we can get a lot more of an idea of how to fight him. He's not one you want to be hugging at all. And if you also notice there, I got a little announcement when we came back saying that a devil hoe has been sighted. And that is... That is scary. <laughs> oh, Devil Ho is notorious for those who know the name. He's also one I could have fought before. I couldn't do the official quest, and... I had some recording technical issues. I wanted to fight him already, and... Yeah, that kind of went down the toilet, but... Elder Recess was a much more fun thing to see, right? Yes. Absolutely better. I I think you would have had a lot of trouble fighting Devil Ho where you were at that point. I, I don't I don't think your gear is up to snuff. Prove me wrong. But uh, that Levisioth fight was a scary, scary thing. That was some close calls there. Mm -hmm. There are some fights the light bow gun is great or horrible at. Fighting Ergon and his lava field of landmines around him would probably be a little bit annoying, but less so than it was with the daggers. Mm -hmm. All the dashing through the dagger, through the stuff on the ground, and then one goes off. Oof, it's a really nasty part. This is it. But someone like Odogoron, who is agile himself, you can actually have a really fun duel, just dodging around his attacks, hitting his weak point really well. There's a nice quest coming up for some Palico gear I'm tempted to show off bits of, just because I do so well against Odo. You'll notice that the handler is wearing some adorable witchy-type costume there for Halloween. And actually, she's got a couple different costume changes depending on what part of the game you're in and what areas you're looking at. That was something I was quite happy to see, is once you're late in the game, you will get additional costumes to reward you. This is a very much a living game. For anybody who's on the fence about buying it, Monster Hunter, as long as you're okay with somewhat difficult games that are more based on your skill, so a lot of action games, and you're okay with a little bit of micromanagement, it's not a terrible amount, but you do have some micromanagement you need to do, I say it's one of the best games out there, and World is a great place to come in for new players. If you're a fan of Capcom games in general, and they're 
general attitude of action for how they handle the games, you'll like this one. It's deep, it's got a lot to do, a lot of variety, and a lot of replayability. I recommend it for a lot of Devil May Cry fans, I recommend it for a lot of Dark Souls fans, I know that's not Capcom, but the challenging monsters which don't really give you even a health bar, I mean, that is, there's a lot of things about Monster Hunter that people found, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. And um, I have seen players who would avoid these kind of games fall in love with this and have just become really good players just by constantly playing the game. Like anything else, you will get better. Time to look at some sets. Indeed. Not a big fan of the Kadachi set. There's too much exposed, and I don't feel like there's a lot of actual Kadachi pieces on it. It's more like a coat with some embellishments. And some little antennae. At least the skills on it are pretty good. There's some sets you really want to pay attention to with certain weapons. This is one of those speedster sets, really good for people who want to be on the move and uh, excellent for both insect glaive users and anybody who does big jump attacks. Greatsword users in some cases are big with their jump attacks. Hammer, of course. And all that constitution bonus you get there, all the evade extender, anything you want to dodge with. You got some really good pieces there. Although the male and female sets are interesting in their approach. I never like that little cap they give her. It's going to fall off her head any moment. No, no, there's a, there's a hairpin that usually goes in there. I have learned secrets from my female friends. They actually don't, the hat is actually not worn on the head. There's a little hair clip hidden underneath it. To all the women out there, I apologize if I'm giving away your secrets. If I'm found dead tomorrow, you all know why. I thought they just stapled it, stapled it right to the scalp. <laughs> they just don't cha -chunk, cha -chunk. staple it to the scalp. Ah, <laughs> uh, the Rathian set. It's a good defensive set. I just wish it had a little bit more oomph to it, either in appearance or such. But the female one has, well, battle ball gown. I always want to picture just like what would happen when they're sliding down a dirt hill in that thing. They'd stop sliding immediately and become some sort of dirt scoop. Then again, you're diving down on a monster with an insect glaive. I mean, it's a good way to, to gouge an eye out. Skills on this one aren't bad, like I said, though. A lot of recovery up, some health boosts. But it's just a generic defensive one with some poison kicks. Uh, some of the later Rathian sets we'll find actually have some really good bonuses for poison. And something I just want people to understand is there's kind of this bad rep that people give poison. And for newer players, it's hard for you to tag the monster with all your hits. So poison is a great way to get lots of damage in without having to worry about hitting a monster far too much. And it's excellent with weapons like dual blades where you can consistently do the status. Just remember, you can only tag a monster with a status three times before it basically gains immunity to that status. The Buzz Lightyear style uh, Bon armor. And that's from Radabon. I love how you can kind of see the face inside the helm there, but it just looks extra creepy. I love the Spaceman version that they do for the, uh, the Palicos, actually. It's one of my favorites. The Palico one is just boss. I don't show it off here. The female version is a lot more kitty cat. It is. I actually like the style on this. Kind of the bodysuit with the big plates. And it's got almost this sort of luminescence to a lot of the, uh, the plating on it. Mm-hmm. And this one's a very interesting defensive set. It has some very specific skills like tremor or bleeding resistance. You're not going to need a lot, but against particular creatures. Guard is very useful. There are pieces of the Bond set that I have actually used quite often on a lot of my Lance sets. And it works out great with Lance, Heavy Bow Gun, and of course, um, your Gun Lance. And all those sleep attacks too can be very handy if you're playing one of those builds. I want to see her do the great soul, great sword shoulder tackle into someone with that. <laughs> and here we got our 80s rock hair. I say Kabuki. 
I'm saying that's much, very much a Kabuki wig. You say 80s rock era, I say Kabuki. And it could be both. It could be an 80s rock band known as Kabuki. Which, was there an 80s rock band known as Kabuki? I'm sure there is some band out there that has done that shtick. I actually like the look of the face mask on this one. The framing looks really good. Especially on your character here. Oh, there's a cat head. The skills on any armor set that have only one piece tend to be very unusual. This one's not the best. Flinch Free has its uses, but there's a lot of better things I'd rather wear on my head slot. Flinch Free is really good if you've got friends who are new to the game and decided to pick up Longsword. I love this armor's look, especially the beta. Yeah, the Lava Seoth armor has actually got a very cool look, and the skills on it are okay, but they are somewhat specific for where you use them. You just became a Final Fantasy Dark Knight right there. I would say so. The fire defense on it is excellent. And if you actually look overall, the defenses are great. It's got good dragon defense, a little bit of thunder, and an excellent amount of fire. Water and ice are used so rarely that the defenses on this set almost sell it alone, with even without the skills. Mm -hmm. But then quick sheath is great. Heat Guard is always handy if you're going into the Elder Recess. Affinity Sliding is one of my favorite skills. Great for hammer users going down that hill. You just get such a huge affinity boost. It doesn't last that long, but right there, spread power shots. That's the one that's very good. Mm -hmm. Kind of wish I had this before I switched to the bow gun, but just how it rolled. There's a lot of skills I can slap on with a ranged weapon that'll help it like that. There's some for your spread shots, some for your, your explosives, I believe. Your piercing shots get one. And there's a lot of other unique ways. Depending on how you build your bow gun, you can slap on some very interesting skills. I really like going explosive with the heavy bow gun and just loading up on those damage boosting skills. Quick Sheath is a very interesting skill. It is actually very good for bow users. It's also very good for the longsword, and it's excellent for anybody who uses the great sword. Any heavy weapon, Quick Sheath is pretty handy for. I'm not sure if I feel too safe standing next to those nitro toads beside the fire. Especially with the embers flickering off there. Oh, oh, I see a wiggler. There's a wiggler in a pot over there. It's a wiggler. It's a queen wiggler, actually. <gasps> the queen wiggler. But next time, we'll face another new beastie. So I hope you join me for that. And take care, all.